Hi, uh, welcome to the first class of AnyPoint Platform Development Fundamentals. This is the first level of course in the MuleSoft, uh, where uh, we would be talking about the basic fundamentals of the AnyPoint Platform and the MuleSoft Mule ESP here. So at the end of this course, like we will be trying to see like how to build the applications uh, like by connecting each other. And uh, basically we will be trying to build the application network, which is nothing but just integrating applications together uh, by following some design practices or the best design architecture. Here we are using this API led connectivity architecture, which is the predefined architecture for uh, connecting your applications together. And we are going to use that architecture and we will be connecting the applications together where we will be taking out one of the use case and we will be building that particular use case as part of this class and uh, we will be using the AnyPoint platform so that is basically the web application uh, which is also called as the ipas integration platform as a service which can be used for maintaining the complete api lifecycle so when i say api lifecycle so first of all it would be like designing the apis so for designing we need to use some language for creating the specification so what do you mean by designing the apis whenever you define an api so ideally you need to specify like what are the specifications like what is the incoming object that you're expecting what is the response that your api is going to return and do we need to send the data as part of the header or in the post request body or what is the structure of that data whether it is going to be uh, a json structure or it's going to be xml so all these kind of details we will be typically defining it in our api specification that we are going to do it as part of api designing phase and next one is building the apis uh, nothing but uh, implementing the apis so once we have the design ready like we have the specification ready what we need to do we need to make sure that we will be writing our business logic matching that particular specification so that we will be taking care of the second phase of the api lifecycle that is api implementation and the last phase is like managing and deploying the apis managing and deploying the apis in the sense like we will be primarily deploying our applications on the cloud hub and on top of it we will be applying our runtime policies like what do you mean by this runtime policies uh, we have slas throttling security based policies like we, whether you want to go ahead with the basic authentication or OAuth authentication so what kind of security protocols that you want to implement on top of your APS so all these things can be configured or managed as part of the last life cycle of the API management like our last uh, phase of the API life cycle that is like API management and, and deployment deployment and managing the APIs so we can actually uh, I mean, uh, define or maintain the complete API lifecycle by using a product called AnyPoint platform. So, which is in short, a simple web application where we have different components for designing and for deployment and for building the applications. So that would be really helpful for building our applications in the MuleSoft. And uh, here we have one more tool called AnyPoint Studio. So most of you have heard about Eclipse might be. So Eclipse is a simple a Java based tool uh, used for uh, developing your uh, uh, Java based web applications. So similarly, for developing the Mule applications, we are going to use this tool called AnyPoint Studio, which we call it as a desktop based IDE, nothing but desktop based integrated development environment. So whenever you want to develop something, you need some associated jar files or utilities, some tool to build your application. So similarly, for building the Mule applications also, we would be using this AnyPoint Studio. This is just a wrapper written on top of the Eclipse and they just named it as AnyPoint Studio. And on the, in AnyPoint Studio, we will be building the applications and we will be debugging our applications and see how the data is going across, uh, across multiple components and how data is being transformed across the events and the flow components as well. And we would be trying to use the following connectors like database connector. So basically connector is a component case. In short, uh, people who haven't attended the demo, so connector is in short, just a, a component which is going to be used to connect to that particular application or else it could be a database or it could be a third party API. So anything. So end of the day, whenever you want to connect to, so, to some third party application or a third party device, we will be using a component called connector where you can configure all the details in the connector that will automatically take care of connecting to that third party application. So here we will be talking about like database connector for using the for connecting to the database 
and uh, remember this database connector is like a which is used only for the relational databases not for the my no sql databases so there are different connectors for the no sql databases but database connector is purely for the rdbms relational databases and we have file connectors file connector is used to connect to any local file system and uh, ftp ftp and sftp connectors are also available like to connect to the different sftp uh, so, i mean uh, folders or uh, basically which is being developed on the sftp and the ftp transports and coming to the web services like primarily we will be talking about like rest and the soap web services we have a http connector for connecting to the rest web services and uh, web service consumer for connecting to the soap web services and we have some of the uh, sas based connectors uh, like most of them are like sas based connectors so the reason is like uh, when you say sas based connectors so here you you can think of salesforce which is nothing but they are providing the software as a service so we have similarly more sas based applications like workday so where all the hr related components are going to be uh, available as a service so similarly we have a lot of other applications but as part of this class we will be focusing mainly on connecting to the salesforce application as an example for connecting to the saas based applications and we will be talking about on how to connect to the jms jms in the sense like java messaging services so why we need the jms implementation so whenever you want to communicate between the applications one way is like either by sending the request either on the http or on the soap apis other way is like by publishing the messages to the queues and the topics so that the other systems can be acting as a listener to that particular queue so that they can consume the message from that particular queue and so that it can continue the processing so even we have that connectivity for the jms queues as well by using the jms connector so apart from this like we will be talking majorly on how to use the uh, data view component like which is primarily used for transforming the content from one specific format to another specific format like let's say you got a json data might be your target system was expecting the content in the xml format or in csv format so we need to convert the data into the target system understandable format so for that we will be using this data view transformation language which is going to be used for conversion of the data for, i mean from one specific format to the another specific format and then we will be actually defining our application logic and returning the error handling mechanism so what happens and what should be the scenario like what should be the business logic that needs to be written whenever there is an error and how that error has to be executed whether it has to be propagated or whether it has to be continue the execution so we can configure all these things as part of the error handling mechanism and finally we would be talking about like how to structure our applications in a better way to maintain the better readability and to maintain the better code uh, uh, visibility as well so how how we are going to maintain our structure in such a way that so that it could be easy for reusability and it could be easy for deploying your applications as well finally the last component that we are going to talk about is like the batch data processing so whenever you have a huge data uh, that comes from like where uh, you might want to uh, upload uh, some huge uh, i mean flat file into a hadoop based file system or else where you want to sync up your contacts data between the uh, salesforce and the netsuite application so whenever there is a huge data that is involved then ideally we should be thinking about the batch data processing so there is a component called batch component which will be used for processing the data in chunks so that there will be some i mean exception handling mechanism that has been defined which can automatically uh, gives you the flexibility to handle your data in a better way and in a balanced way yes as i mentioned like it's going to be primarily the hands on course and it is going to contain like the lectures in between and then we will be going to the walk throughs where we will be taking that particular walk through or the exercise and we will be continuing from there so once you are done with this course ideally you should be able to clear the first level of certification that is mcd mule sort certified developer level 1 development fundamentals mule 4 so once you are able to basically uh complete the course then definitely you should be able to clear this first level of certification and there are some uh, do yourself exercises and where you can just see uh, how you have been uh, uh, performed like so far in the mule soft and how you have been uh, able to uh, i mean are you able to really address those questions as part of the certification or not so there are some self assessment quiz and exercises as well yeah so at the end of this class you should be certified with the mule certified developer level 1 mule 4 fundamentals